done. All right, so of all the things that we've done here at Sleepy Hollow, one thing we haven't done yet is actually play the course. So we're, we're gonna do it. This is part two. If you guys didn't see the last video, make sure you go back and check it out. We got fitted for the TS drivers and we're giving one away, so you don't wanna miss that. But today we're gonna play it, but the added bonus is we're gonna do a playing lesson with our buddy Kevin Sprecker here. Hey guys, welcome back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not too long ago, right? Yeah. So, Kevin, tell us a little bit, because a lot of people, they hear the, the, the label playing lesson, but I don't think a lot of people know what that really means. So what does that entail? If someone comes out and does a playing lesson with you, what's involved? So we're gonna go around it. I'm gonna pretty much coach you around the course. You know, ask you what shot are you playing? Why are you playing that shot? Maybe make a suggestion on, on a different shot. Talk about different lies, course management, club selection, shot selection, how to play uneven lies. As you see when I get out of the course, you're not gonna to see too many flat lies out there. Talk about wind conditions, talk about where you should aim for certain pins, take the pin out of the greens, everything you can possibly think of that, that, that you wanna do on the course, except for we're not gonna talk about technique. Mm. We're, we're gonna take the game that you have and I'm gonna manage you around the course. I always tell people I'm a, I'm a great caddy, I'm just really expensive. <laughs> right? So I'm good for about five to eight shots a side, because wow. I'm gonna help you out with, with all those things we talked about. So, so we're gonna learn how to, how to manage your game around the course better versus how to change your game. And that's, the, that's the idea on a playing lesson. And if you can only just hit the ball for me, we'd be all set. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what's so cool. I think a lot of people, when they first hear that, they just think it's just like bringing your swing coach out there and, and learning what you would learn maybe at a range. But here, we're really learning how to play the game. Right. right? Exactly. And it allows me to see what you do on the course. What kind of decisions do you make? And we'll talk about, as you said, as we go through, you'll see we talk about different aiming points and stuff. So it's, it's really a, a different experience for most people. Perfect. You ready to tee it up? I'm ready. Let's do it. So the first hole, dog leg left, par four, we got a bunker on the left, and I wanna discuss driving lanes with you guys. Okay, because everyone curves the ball a certain way, most people slice the ball, but what they do is they tee up in the center of the tee box, aim down the center of the fairway, and only give themselves half the fairway to hit it into. So what I'm gonna tell you to do is if you're slicing the ball, tee off on the right side of the tee box, aim down the left center of the fairway. So you're curving it back to the center. If you over curve it, at worst you're in the right rough. If you hit it straight, you're in the left center of the fairway, you're probably not going to hit it left. Mm -hmm. So we'll talk about driving lanes like that. So I want you to stand behind your ball, so your body, your ball, and, your, and where you want to start it, it's in a straight line. I like it. I'm going to aim for that trap. Aim for the trap, right? And then pick something out close to you to help you kind of aim over that. Okay. And that, that creates your start line. I like that. So maybe this high fescue start here. Perfect. Now Kevin will show us how it's really done. Oh yeah, oh yeah, all day long. It's nice to see Kevin hit a ball for once, instead of us. You want to carry it on the green. So I think a 48 is going to come out too low and hot. Okay. You've got to carry it about 50% of the way. I like the 56 out there. Try to land it on that right. Yeah, land it on the yeah, kind of where his ball is. Yeah, land it towards his ball, but on the ridge, and then let it release back. Let's see if it's easier said than done. So when you see amateurs like myself and Frank, guys with mid-level, high-level handicaps. Um, especially guys that are fast with tempo, because that's something I struggled with for a long time. Mm -hmm. What tips or advice could you give for anyone who's fast, all around, tempo, walking to the ball, tee to green, swinging, walking, acting? Well, if, if, that's, your, if that's how you are, then embrace it. Don't, hmm. don't battle it. Okay. So, you know, you do everything fast, then, then you're gonna then keep doing it fast. If you start to mess with your tempo, you start to, it affects your swing too much because mm -hmm. you're not used to it. Right. So, so just do everything fast. Just, hmm. you know, just be aware of it and know that that's, that's what you do. That's just how you're playing, that, so That's adapt. just how you're gonna play. Just make sure you don't get too quick. Right. Right? You don't want to get, you know, so check your grip pressure. Make sure you exhale before you swing. Uh-huh. That tends to let some of the pressure out of your, out of your lungs, out of, out of your body. Right. 
Um, it's hard to be real tense when, when, you're, when your lungs aren't full of air, uh -huh. and, it's, and it's easy to be tense when you are full of air. Right, good point. So you want a cleansing breath, as the sports psychologists say. Uh -huh. Exhale, take one look to your target and then go, but, but rely a lot on your, on your pre-shot routine uh -huh. when you're feeling quick. Something we talk a lot about on the golf podcast. What do you think, this course got any good views? Where would we see those? Huh? Right there. <laughs> I don't know if I trust this bridge. I don't know, man. I think that bridge was built in what, 1890? I love it. I made it. Made it. <laughs> Look at Frank sticking bends, man. Still coming in a little steep. Let's go ask Kevin about it. Coming in steep, Kevin. Actually, that was, that was pretty good. The ground soft. Yeah. So and, soft and you ground. and you had a slight un uphill lie, so it's harder to rotate through it. Okay. So that was normal. All right. Just when you get on uneven lies, move the ball a little bit back or up, depending upon where where your weight is. If you're on a downhill lie, move the ball forward. Mm -hmm. If you're on an uphill lie, move the ball back a little bit. Just because that's where your center of gravity is going to be. Yeah, I like that. Okay. Think you can pull this one off? Absolutely. Sorry, he's getting rocky. Sorry, he's All day. All day. Oh, so close. Great shot. All right, fourth hole. First green. Frank has not hit. Yeah, pushed it. That's all right. Heavy rough, pushed it right. It's wet, right. it's heavy. It's gotta get up and down. This is not raining. Yeah. There you go. Good shot. Great well shot. Played. All right, Frank and Kevin are just running over to that little stand over there to uh, grab like a granola bar and something to drink. I figured it'd be a good time to kind of give you an update on how the round is going with Kevin. I've never actually taken a playing lesson and a lesson like this and it's great because Kevin has been taking us um, from the tee box to the green pointing out the things that we should be doing a little differently. Uh, you saw the tip on the first hole lining up the tee shot. You know, a little bit in the fairway, which way to position my feet, which way to lean on some short wedge shots, how to play a ball out of the bunker, how to play a ball off the back leg or the front leg. Um, so overall, so far, five holes in, I'm actually playing quite well for, for, for me and, um, you know, feeling good and we got a lot of golf left, so I'm looking forward to seeing what else we get out of him. Just look at his view walking up to this green. Yeah, stick. Right club to get out of there, though. Yeah, when it's thick, you gotta go with loft. Yeah. Get it out. Cool. Trust it, 30 yard shot, 35 max. Bit of roll out. Great shot. Nice shot, Frank. Number two handicap hole. Put that TS to work, Mike. Perfect. Nicely played. Perfect lie for that. It's downhill, so you don't have to hit it very hard. You just kind of, you're almost going to feel like you pinch it between the ground and your club. It's kind of like, let it hop and keep the club leaning forward. You know, and let it work up and down. Almost like you're going to hit down on the back of it. And it's just going to pop out of there and run and, and, and release down to the hole. Gotcha. Pretty firm with the grip. Don't get, don't get loose with it. Now we just got to make it happen. There you go. Good not bad, not bad. Yeah. Much easier to play than getting, than getting crazy with a wedge. Yeah. That's why he's here. <laughs>
All right, we just made the turn here on a tent hole, and so far the best tip that Kevin's given me today is this whole weight situation on my toes. I'm, I was leaning over. I can't really do it, but maybe you could show our. You were set. You were setting your feet, and then you'd reach out to the ball, and you get on your toes too much. And then when you swing, you, you don't turn very well, so you fall forward. Mm -hmm. So what I want you to do is set up, and put the club down behind the ball, set your feet, maybe even kind of jostle your toes up and down, find your balance. So, you, so you'll end up net kind of the same away from your hands, but you're, you're not on your toes. So then you can use your legs better to rotate your body, and you'll hit much better shots that way. Perfect. Nice. Eagle putt. Sure, we gotta lay up, but this guy can go for it. Exactly. Called <laughs> being a pro. That's right. So balance and rotation are the two money tips that Kevin gave me today. And they really help it. You can't do the second one without the first one. Exactly. So you gotta get your balance first, then you uh -huh. can rotate. I love it. It's really been helpful. I mean, getting through. I wasn't getting, I wasn't rotating. Yeah. So you, when you don't difference. rotate, you slide. That's why you're hitting pop-ups and doing this other stuff. Yeah. As soon as you start rotating, you hit eight irons to 12 feet. See that? <laughs> <laughs> it's that simple. Yep. That's it. So this alarm, maybe you guys can hear it, has been going off for about solidly the last five minutes. Kevin's been working here 14 years, so he's never heard that alarm before. And the only thing I could think is that Indian Point nuclear plant is not too far from here. If you're gonna die, you might as well die on a golf course, right? This guy's got his work cut out from here. You can try pitch. Okay. The key here is that you're gonna stay on your back foot and just make sure you turn on it. Rotate. And, yep, but you're gonna, you're, you're gonna, the ball's gonna go this way. Okay. It might go a little left too, but the key is just to make sure you stay, you find a way to stay balanced and really just kind of rotate into it. Oh, it's easy. <laughs> there you go. Oh, that might be really good. Nice shot. Perfect. You don't Thank want you. that one over. That's about as good as you can do from there. Well, Look at I that. I mean, that tip. Back to the green. Amazing. Nice. You know, let's make another par now. Now, how would you have played it different if he didn't? He wasn't there? You know, I, I wouldn't have, I, what I was thinking about was the, he said it at the very last minute, stay balanced. And normally I'd be more on those front toes and I'd be all over the place. But him saying that kind of helped me like balance back into my, and just take that light swing. It actually slowed my tempo down by, you know, staying more balanced in the feet. So this guy's worth every penny. So check out why they call this the punch ball. Now listen, I'm on a three pars in a row streak here. This is for birdie. Just want to nestle this close. I'm gonna look at you the whole time. The whole time. <laughs> not high enough. We're not done. Woo, not bad from there. Four pars in a row. There you go. Yeah, there you go. Alright. <laughs> Thumbprint hole. Alright, tell me a little bit about this hole. So it's 150 yard par three downhill, mm -hmm. uh, surrounded by bunkers. Oh yeah. Uh, pin's That's actually in the hole in one spot today. So it's just a, it's a, it plays a little bit less than it looks. Okay. 150, probably plays about 135. Uh, not much else to it. It's just a beautiful shot over the Hudson. Uh, That's play, it, just yeah. go for it. Go for it. All right, let's pick do your, it. Pick your club and commit to it. Let's do this.
scared of heights. Man, what a day so far. This place has lived up to every bit of height. Everyone we've talked to saying we're gonna play here, they were like, oh, you know, it's jealous, it's awesome. And there's a lot of hype and it just, it's lived up to every bit of it. Sleepy Hollow is gorgeous. And it's just been so cool having Kevin Sprecker there just to be able to, to call him over and ask questions, especially those tricky shots. I seem to never know how to play those different lies, downhill, uphill. Um, just having him be able to, to straighten me out on those. It's been worth its weight in gold. It's not something that you would do on the range, so. All right, I don't know how much daylight we have left here. So we're walking up the 18th. I'll tell you what, what an experience, what a day. What a course. What a course. Big thanks to Kevin. You're welcome, guys. Hey, thank you for coming out. Yes, it's fun. Appreciate it. Hopefully, you learned a couple of things. A lot, a lot. of stuff. <laughs> and it's just because I was talking about this before. Remember. It's that you get into situations you might not think of if we were on the range right. or something like that, where I could say, "Oh yeah, I have trouble with this yeah, shot. What do I do?" Yeah. Exactly. And then having you there just to make those small changes. Yeah. Yep. And just having me there sometimes reminds you of certain things too. Right. Yep. So. And what'd you say? You were good for how many aside? About five to eight. I think that's what we got here, right? That's what we got, yeah. I think so. We got to tally it up at the end, but great stuff. And Kevin, if they didn't see the other videos, how do people get in touch with you? Uh, the best is through my website, which is kevinsprecher.com. Uh, it's S-P-R-E-C-H-E-R. -E -E that's the best way to get in touch with me. Or my Instagram is, uh, or Twitter is at Kevin Sprecher. And Kevin's here all year round. So get out here, call him up, get a lesson, and then maybe uh, we'll play together. <laughs> all right, thanks, guys. Thank you.